this intro has nothing to do with the video, but it's the plaque filmed from a slightly awkward angle so I don't show you outside my window so I don't get stalked. And me! And hi. <laughs> I'd like to thank my friends and family, my subscribers, my pets, the unhealthy amount of corn dogs I've eaten that give me the energy to film my videos, and my cactus mirror. Thank you. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to my channel. Hope you're doing well. I'm gonna say right off the bat, this video is extremely cursed. Not because of anything that's in the video. That part's fine. It's cursed because Oh my god, <laughs> it took forever to make for absolutely no good reason. It took me like two months to film the drawings in here when normally it would have taken me like a week tops. <laughs> I hit 100,000 subscribers, so I had to pause filming this so then that way I can film those. And then also my tablet stopped working for a brief moment in time. I'm sure many of you remember that. And then there was another reason I couldn't film, which I can't quite say yet, but another thing got in the way of me making this. So, despite all odds, it is here. <laughs> but what is this video exactly? Well, I'm sure you guessed by the title. I thought it would be a really fun idea to draw some other artists' characters. I'm also gonna say right off the bat that I could have made this video so much longer than it is. There's a lot of artists that I follow that have their own original characters, and I would very much like to make a part two. In this video, I stuck to artists that you can find here on YouTube, but I would also like to make a part two either doing more YouTube artists or artists that I follow on places like Instagram and Twitter. So if that's something that you're interested interested in, let me know wh what you think of this video and maybe it'll happen. Another quick little thing, many of you have noticed in last week's video, or not if you didn't watch it, <laughs> there's a new border for digital speed paints or uh, any type of digital art video. But I started filming this before I actually made that border. I used to not record my full screen because I didn't like the way that the taskbar looked at the bottom and like the top part of my computer screen. I don't know what that part's called but I don't like it. So. <laughs> I would record my screen a little bit zoomed in, but that made it a lower quality. So now I have this border, except this is still zoomed in because I didn't make the border then. <laughs> but for anyone who missed it, there's a border now, which you will see in just a minute. So I've been rambling for way too long. So let, let's actually get into the artists and the characters and the whatnot. L l let's do it. <laughs> First up, we have Tamika. I think that's how you say her name. <laughs> All of these artists I've been following for quite a while now, Tam included. And to be honest, when I made this video, the first thought I had is, oh, it'll, it'll also give my followers some new artists to follow so they can, they can learn about the artists that I like. But then as I planned out the four different artists I wanted to talk about in this video, I realized that pretty much all of them get mentioned in my comment section every now and again, and Tam is no different. <laughs> but you know, it's, it, it is what what it is. If you somehow don't know these artists, go follow them. I feel like out of all of the artists that do get mentioned in my comment section every now and again, Tam is by far the most mentioned. <laughs> at least in the beginning of my channel, but she has definitely been an artist that has been brought up a lot in my comment section, so I'm assuming many of you know who she is already. <laughs> when I decided I wanted to include one of her characters in this video, I immediately wanted to draw Scar, because she's my favorite character by far that Jen has. And like I said in the intro, it's been a while since I started filming this video. <laughs> Typically there's very little time between me filming the drawing and then me making the notes about things I want to talk about in the voiceover. But this has been almost two months, so... <laughs> I, I what, what I did is I, I rewatched the sped up footage and hoped for the best. Maybe I'll remember something. And the main thing I noticed is that my god, her eyes were far apart. <laughs> she looked like a frog. I am so sorry. I definitely fixed it later on in the line art phase. They're still a little far apart, but it's fine. It, we, we can ignore it. I think it, I think in the end it looks fine. Just don't think about it too much. <laughs> and I also remember that when I was looking for reference pictures for these characters, for Scar in particular, I ended up mixing a little bit of her old design and her newer design. In the end, I definitely think it's just her new design, or at least mostly her new design. <laughs> but I ended up mixing up a couple of reference pictures, mostly because I couldn't really find a whole lot, at least for like full body stuff. I wanted all of these drawings to be full bodies because I hate myself and I like torture apparently, but it definitely made things a little bit harder when looking for reference pictures, but I mean, I made do. Out of all of the artists in this video, I think I struggled drawing Tam's character the most most, just because I feel like, oddly enough, her art can be pretty different from one another. I feel like whenever she does get brought up in my comments, people think that her art can look kind of similar. I think the main difference
difference between our art is the colors. I tend to use very bright, saturated colors, and then Tam uses a lot of, like, darker, desaturated stuff. And so when it came to translating the color palette, I had a little bit of a difficult time. Whenever I draw a character from something, it's always an interesting battle to make the color palette something that is typical in my art while still keeping the colors true to the character, if that makes any sense. And so since this is my art, I wanted to make it look like my art, so I wanted to make the colors a lot brighter so it would be something that you would usually see from me. But then also that said, it, w it was hard to find that balance while working with a character that has a generally desaturated color palette. In the end, I think I ended up color swatching each of the colors and then once everything was put down, I ended up adjusting the colors as a whole and then tweaking things a little bit farther wherever I saw it fit. But again, it was just a balance of like changing it to fit my style but not changing it drastically enough to where it didn't look like the character. I also remember I had quite a bit of trouble with the pose, but also I really liked the pose, so I didn't want to change it. I just thought that the angle was really, really fun. I mean, I think there's definitely some things that could be improved on, but overall, I really like it. I had a lot of fun drawing her sort of larger, baggier clothing in combination with the pose. I think that it makes for some really interesting shapes. Another thing I want to mention while I'm drawing Scar, sorry for the flashing images for the references. <laughs> That's something that changes later on throughout all of them but this was before I realized I could make a floating window of a reference picture. So you'll see some flashing every now and again. So sorry about that, <laughs> but hey, at least you don't have to deal with it in the future. <laughs> As always in many of my illustrations, I wanted to add some sort of background element and for this one, I had no idea what I wanted to do. At first, I had the thought to make some sort of like long shadow underneath her in the shape of a star, but I couldn't really make that look good. <laughs> so instead I ended up with this sort of like path of stars leading behind her. But generally I played around with some stuff in the beginning and then tweaked some stuff afterwards. Normally I'll add these sort of background elements at the very end of a drawing, but for this one I decided to do it before I started shading. Because of the nature of the background elements I wanted to add, I thought it would be easier to do that rather than wait. You'll see in the next drawing I made that I ended up doing what I normally do, where I save it at the end. But for this one, since I wanted the whole background to to be colored and kind of darker colors than I would typically go for. I thought it would be easier to do all of that before I shaded, so then that way I can pick shading colors that wouldn't battle too much with the background colors. I don't know how I ended up doing with that, but you can let me know. <laughs> and then off camera, I ended up playing with the stars in the background a little bit more. Some of the gradient work I did on them ended up a little iffy, so I just tweaked some stuff off camera because I didn't think to do it while I was recording because super big brain smart man. But overall, I had a lot of fun drawing Scott. I think I had the most fun drawing her ripped tights. That's not something that I draw a whole lot, so I had a lot of fun trying to figure out how to do that. If you don't know who Tam is, I would highly recommend following her. Like I said, she uses a lot of darker, desaturated colors in her art, and she also has a really fun line quality to her art, and I don't know, I really like it. <laughs> the way that she draws her art, I don't want to say creepy, but like, there's, there's a little bit of a somewhat eerie element while still being very visually appealing and kind of cute to look at, so if you I don't know who she is, I would highly recommend following her. She's a very fun artist. 10 out of 10. <laughs> Next up, we have Leslie Lou Marie. This is the drawing that is it's, very, it's years in the making. It was a very long time coming. <laughs> of all of the artists that I've included in this video, Leslie is by far the artist I followed for the longest time. Fun fact, if there is one artist that introduced me to the art world on YouTube, it would probably be her, so you can blame her for my entire channel existing. <laughs> or thank her, depending on your view. But. I'd say blame her. And I've been meaning to draw fan art for her character Luca for literal years, and I never did. So today's the day. <laughs> now at first I kind of struggled with what kind of pose I wanted him to be in. Like I said, I wanted all of these drawings to be a full body because I hate myself, but I had a hard time figuring out a pose to fit the full body. I decided to go with this sort of like sitting, kind of hunched over, grumpy looking pose. <laughs> I thought that, that suited his character. I definitely wanted to find a balance of having something that suited the character while also being a full body, which was surprisingly difficult because I can have like a pose where they're standing up being all fun and active and lively. But you know, even if those are the poses that I typically gravitate towards, that's not something that would necessarily suit him as a character. Honestly though, other than struggling with coming up with a pose, was that a sentence? 
I don't know, I recorded this sentence three times, we'll just go with it. <laughs> Other than that, I was very much in my comfort zone <laughs> when I was drawing this. Well, I feel like stylistically, like the way that we draw people and clothing and all of that stuff, I feel like our art can be pretty different in terms of character design and color palettes. I feel like our art can be pretty similar. Luca is a character whose design is absolutely right up my alley. And when translating the color palette into my style, I changed pretty much nothing. I think there was a couple of tweaking I did here and there, but for the most part, it was just a very easy translation. And honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, since I've been following Leslie far longer than any of these artists, I wouldn't be surprised if she was an original inspiration of my color choices. Even in the videos that she made where she looks at her older art, she's always used sort of brighter, more vibrant colors. And I can't say for sure if that was an influence, but honestly, I wouldn't be surprised at all if it was. In terms of like physically drawing Luca, the only thing I really struggled with was the leg that's facing the camera because I decided to do this sort of crisscross leg type of pose. Crisscross applesauce. <laughs> Sit on the carpet, Luca, it's story time. Teacher's gonna read us a book. I don't know why I keep trying to draw these poses. I can never do it. If you have any tips for drawing these sorts of poses, let me know. It's just the leg. I don't know how to draw legs from this angle. Please, someone help me. Why do I keep doing this to myself? <laughs> In the end, I'm not sure if I super love the end product, but I think it's passable. <laughs> So we'll just move on. We don't have to look at it anymore. Out of all of the drawings that I made in this video, this one was, I think, the one that I finished the fastest. I was very much in my comfort zone when I was making this drawing. That said, I don't have anything super spectacular to say about the actual art process, other than I didn't really know what to do with the background, but also, what's new? <laughs> In the end, I decided to just make some square rectangly shapes out of the colors on his jacket, and then I played around with the, the size of them, the angles of them, the, the whole thing. Excellent commentary there. <laughs> but you know what I mean? I changed like the angle and the size and the whole the whole shebang. Kind of like the leg. I'm not sure if I love the end product, but it's passable. So just like the leg, we're gonna move on. We don't gotta talk about it. <laughs> I know that a lot of my followers have YouTube channels or want to start YouTube channels. And something that I get a lot is people asking if they can take the idea for my OC series and talk about their characters and go ahead it wasn't even my idea. I got it from Leslie. <laughs> I've been subscribed since she made her original, like, Luca video. I, I can't remember if it was a couple of videos or if it was just the one, but not the ones she made fairly recently, the ones from years ago. <laughs> That's where I got the idea for my series. A, a staple on my channel I just ripped off from someone else, so there we go. Sorry, Leslie. <laughs> Leslie's had a lot of influence, mostly in my channel. Like I said, she introduced me to the art world of YouTube, so if I have never found her channel, I probably wouldn't have my channel, or at least I wouldn't be as interested or involved in the art community on YouTube. So, lots of love to her. <laughs> if you don't know who she is, her videos are so fun to watch. Her sense of humor is really funny, and also her art is really cute. If you like really bright, fun, colorful art and characters, I would highly recommend following her. Her art's lovely. Again, 10 out of 10. Mwah, chef kiss. <laughs> Third in this lineup, we have Jinja Ninja OWO. I don't believe it's OWO, although if it was, that would be hilarious. <laughs> These drawings, the only order they're in is the order I drew them. There isn't any special order of the artist or the characters, it's just the order that I made them. This one was actually the first character that I thought of to draw. Ever since Rei introduced her magical girl characters, I've been in love with all of them. And when I wanted to include one of them in this video, I wasn't sure which one I wanted to do, so before I even decided anything else about this video, I thought real long and hard about which one I wanted to include in this video. Of course, in the video, you see her character, Azumi, but Emmy was also a, a big choice. It was, they were the runner up. So really the only reason I ended up going with Azumi is because I thought of a drawing to make. <laughs> I was able to come up with like a layout and a pose and everything a lot sooner than with Emmy, so Azumi it is. I think I was most interested to draw this one in the video. Whenever my art style is compared to another artist, it's 
probably Ray. <laughs> Which, by the way, I don't really mind being compared to other artists. I don't really care. I don't want anyone to take this as me complaining or anything. If anything, it's an honor because I love all of these artists a whole heckin' lot. <laughs> In terms of my actual art style, though, I feel like most people say it reminds them of Ray. I was very interested to actually draw her characters. Honestly, like, I think that there's some stylistic similarities between us, but I'm not sure. I don't, I don't think our art styles are super similar. I don't know, maybe I'm just blind, but you know, <laughs> it is what it is. I think it's interesting though that my art reminds so many people of her art because my art style was pretty developed before I even started following her on the internet. Even though I have been following all of these artists for years now, I think I've been following her for the shortest amount of time. I think it's very interesting to see how like two artists can develop completely separately from each other and have artistic similarities between them still. I wonder if we have similar influences in our art style. I mean, I guess we would have to have some similarities because you know, similarities, am I right? I don't know what I'm saying, let's move on. While drawing Luca, I was absolutely most in my comfort zone. This one I was also very much comfortable drawing Izumi because there's two types of characters I draw often. Pretty boys with long hair and cute anime girls. That's, that, that's what these two are. So <laughs> we just got, we got the whole gang here. All, all of my two talents <laughs> in the video. For this one, I really tried to find a balance of her sort of, I don't wanna say cutesy appearance, but her cute appearance and her more, I guess, sassy personality. Both of those different, I guess, personality traits are things that I draw pretty often in my art, but I don't draw them often together. So that was really fun to try and figure out how to do. I think out of all of the drawings in this video, this one's my favorite. A, I think artistically, it's the best one that I've made, I think. In terms of like the technical sides of my art, I feel like I see the least issues with this one. Not to say that it's perfect, but I don't know. I think I'm the most proud of this one. I really like the way that it looks. And then I also think I did a really good job with translating, no, capturing her likeness. That's what I'm trying to say. Good job, Oliver. <laughs> I feel like out of all of the characters I made in this video, I was able to capture Izumi's likeness the most. A big, a big struggle of mine, like many artists. I guess not only same face syndrome, but also drawing other people's artists in my style while still having it look like the original character. Of course, there's like color palettes and hairstyles and clothing that really set some characters apart. But something that I really try and focus on is capturing things like face shape, body type, facial features, things like that. And even though it's something that I focus on, it's not something I'm sure I'm super good at. <laughs> but in this one, I think I did a good job, so. C c cool, cool, good, good, good for me. <laughs> I don't know why I'm having such a hard time recording this audio. Somebody please save me. I knew immediately that I wanted to draw her in her magical outfit, but that said, I ended up taking inspiration from her civilian outfit. I guess that would be the way to say it. When making the background, I really, really liked her tights in her sort of, I guess, regular clothes. So I wanted to incorporate them somehow in this. So I ended up making, I ended up making them into the background element. And in the end, I feel like it reminds me of a playing card. I didn't, I, I did, that's not what I was going for, but I'm not mad about it. <laughs> I do think it looks quite cool. And of course, that was something that I did before I shaded. Again, I just wanted to make sure that there wasn't a big jump between the actual drawing and the background elements. And so after I put that down, I ended up color swatching colors from the background and using them to shade with. I think I might've tweaked them a tiny bit, but overall I ended up shading them with pink shades, just like the background to help tie them in a little bit. But if you don't know who Ray is, where have you been? <laughs> I'm pretty sure most of my followers, if not, all of my followers know who she is already, but if you don't, go follow her. I love her art so, so much. I feel like her character designs are some of the most unique and fun that I've ever seen. So if you're a character design slut like I am, go follow Ray. <laughs> And last, but most certainly not least, we have ABD Illustrates. I followed Alex for quite a while now, so it's really cool to see how much his channel has grown. I followed him since his channel was relatively small, and he also has a number of characters for me to choose from. But that said, I immediately knew I wanted to draw Ira. He's by far my favorite character that Alex has, although given my track record of who my favorite characters are, I don't think that that is surprising at all. <laughs> I feel like for a lot of the other drawings in this video, it would be like, I struggled while making it, but the concept came easy. Or like, I struggled with a concept, but the actual drawing was easy. For this one, I kind of struggled all around, because A, we, we love a variety, we love suffering. I, d I absolutely struggled with drawing a pose. I was originally going to make a much more, I guess, straightforward pose, where he was kind of just like, 
sitting there. But I actually really struggled with making that, so I thought, hey, how about, since I'm struggling with this pose, how about I make an even more complicated pose so I can struggle even more, because <laughs> that's how I roll. Just aside, though, I really wanted to have something with a little bit more movement, or a lot more movement, considering how this turned out. <laughs> I really wanted to have a drawing with long flowing cape, because if, 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 if a character has cape, cape needs to be flowing. That's, I don't make the rules, that's just how it is. So in the end, I picked this one. I, I really like the pose, I think it's a lot of fun. I struggled a lot with coming up with the pose, finding the right angle, but I really, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Absolutely, it's not perfect. <laughs> But even if I'm not amazing at drawing these sort of like foreshortened, movement-y, action-y poses, I have a lot of fun drawing them, so just being able to include one in this video was a lot of fun. And even if it's not perfect, I, I had a lot of fun. I really, I'm really proud of how it turned out. I also had trouble translating Ira into my style. And for what? Like, uh, I didn't think... I would have as much trouble, but here we are. <laughs> when it comes to characters that I draw, there are definitely some similar character design elements that I have in a few of my characters, so I don't know why I struggled so much, but I did. I mean, there's always gotta be one. Thanks, Alex. <laughs> I'm kidding. Even though out of all the drawings in this video, this is the one that I struggled with the most. I think it's also the one I had the most fun drawing. <laughs> Which, I mean, I, I don't normally associate suffering with fun, but I mean, it's the first time for everything. I just had so much fun, not only drawing the character, but just drawing a lot of movement in this drawing. Of course, there's like the big flowing cape, but then also the little dangly bits on his shoulders. I, I don't know what that's called, but those things <laughs> and then the scarf. I had so much fun. I, I'm really happy that this is the pose I ended up going with. If I just tried to push through with the original boring sitting there pose, I don't think I would have had as much fun drawing it, so. Out of all four of these drawings, this one had the biggest gap from starting filming to finishing the drawing. It was around this time that I started to have every inconvenience in the world, so, you know. It, it, <laughs> It's here now, and that's all that matters. <laughs> Oddly enough, I feel like I had the hardest time coloring this one. Not necessarily because of the colors themselves, it was just very different for me, I guess. Not hard, different. I think that's the way to put it. <laughs> Ira has a lot of white in his design, and then accents of blue. That's not something that I do very often. I don't typically make white a primary color in a character design. I usually use white as an accent, I guess. But of course, his jacket and his pants and his boots are all white, and then his hair is white, and then his, <laughs> his skin is super pale. And it made making the highlights a little bit odd. I think that subconsciously I ended up putting a lot more effort into the shading of this drawing because I knew adding highlights, like, wouldn't happen. <laughs> I guess. I would definitely be putting highlights on the blue parts of the drawing, but since a lot of the color scheme is white, highlights wouldn't really work out, so. And then also, when I was coloring it, I wasn't sure how to handle the cape. <laughs> I wanted to be sure to include that gradient on Ira's cape, but because- But if you look at the reference picture that I used, like, the cape is pretty much hanging down, and since it's not necessarily a flat shape, but there's, there's a lot less movement to it, if I had drawn something like that, I would be able to just use the gradient tool to go from the bottom to the top, and then boom. <laughs> but because of the way that I drew the cape, there's a lot of folds in it. That proved to be- difficult. <laughs> is this a video about me drawing other artists' characters, or is it a video of me torturing myself? You guys be the judge of that. <laughs> At first I tried to make sort of a gradient using my watercolor brush tool that I use for blending. Didn't really work out, I hated the way it looked, so I deleted that. <laughs> I ended up using the gradient tool, like, in sections. Once I was done adding the gradients to the different selected areas, I just touched it up in some places that I felt like it needed to be touched up, and then boom, Ira. <laughs> of course I needed to add the background element, which I had no idea what to do, and I made it up on the spot. <laughs> As you probably have seen, or are currently seeing, or will see. At first, I colored in the entire background and tried to add this, like, rectangle shape at the bottom, but I hated it, so I deleted it. In the end, I'm not quite sure how to explain what I ended up doing, but it works. It's fine. <laughs> Many of my followers know who Alex is already, but if you don't, he puts so much thought and care into his characters, and he's really good at explaining his process behind all of that. And on top of that, he has an art style that's just generally really fun and lively. His art and his characters are all super charming, so if you don't know who he is, go follow him and give him some love.
And there we go. That's all the artists that I have to talk about and geek over in this video. I very easily could have included a lot more artists, but I don't want this video to go on forever, so I decided to limit it to just this four, but if you want a part two, let me know. If you don't want a part two to this, then we can just pretend that this never happened. <laughs> I had so, so much fun making this video. I always want to draw other artists' characters, but I don't always get the opportunity to. Between making videos here on YouTube and working on my website, comic. I don't have a whole lot of spare time, so I don't know if this is content people want, but it's content that I want, so it's here now. <laughs> Let me know which one of these drawings is your favorite. I would definitely love to hear it. Let me know if you've followed any of these artists already, or if I gave you a new artist to follow. That would make me really happy. These are a bunch of really cool people, so go, 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 go give them some love. <laughs> but that's about all I have for you in this video, so if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Also, feel free to leave a comment about any artists that you like that you think I'll enjoy. I'm always down to follow some artists. And if you are new here, hello, my name is Oliver. I post new videos here every single Wednesday, so if you are looking for a new artist to follow, maybe you found one. I'd really appreciate it if you could stick around. I love sharing my art and my characters with you, so please stay. Please. Um, if you want to see more from me, you can follow me on social media. Those will be on screen now and link them in the description box below. Other than here on YouTube, I'm most active on Instagram, so I'd recommend going over there if you want to see more art and stuff. And there will be some more videos on screen now and link in the ad card for you to check out if you want. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you next week. Bye.